you know that it would be untrue. Okay, so would you like to now talk us through some of the creation of your fabulous quilt? Okay, um, you, you Go Girls is um, a photograph that I've seen several times in our uh, pack, Island Packet newspaper. And what it shows is in 2011, a mayor who had won the year before in the mayor class but lost by six inches to a stallion right. back in 2011 and beating the stallions and the geldings and winning the cup. And on uh, the, the mayor's name is Molly. She is a beautiful marsh tacky horse. And marsh tacky is a South Carolina horse right. that is, can be traced via DNA back to the Spanish leaving horses on the Sea Islands. And those are uh, the uh, people that lived on the Sea Islands, basically using the horses for their farms and, and using them to pull carts, etc. And there were very few of these horses left. And there is now a 400 of them. And one of them, Molly, was the oldest horse in the race. And Molly beat everybody. Oh, she, wow. They flew over the sand. And Brittany Bowen is the rider, a young gal in a hands-up gallop that is just the most exciting thing when you look at her face and see the absolute exhilaration of her flying across the sand. The horse's feet are never touching the ground. Right. Okay, uh, let me start with the background. Yeah, uh, the great. Background of the, of the photograph uh, has a condominium complex where there is a sky, I have a sky. It has trees, but they kind of fade into the buildings. And it has this great uh, group of spectators that are sitting to the side, uh, looking, you know, watching the race, sitting to the side, sitting, standing, taking pictures, watching the race. Well, and um, I brought along, because you asked me about how I do this. Is this the tracing or the, the pattern for the horse? This is the pattern for the horse. And what it is, I'm going to stand up and move back. Here. Okay. You look good so far. Okay. Picture. Right. And what I do is I take the whole photograph and I send it to Staples. Okay. And after I get the photograph back from Staples, I go and stand next to my big picture window in my house. And turn it backwards, and I make my pattern. Yep. And then from there, I start with pieces of the body, and I put them up on my design wall, and I start laying them out on the design wall, which with the the colors I think I want, and often you wind up switching stuff around. And then if you look at the sand, the sand has just bumps from all of these horses racing back and forth. And so I, from a design standpoint, I knew I had to get rid of the condominiums and I turned them into sky. Right. And I tried several different approaches to doing that and thought if I could get the sky to just flow and uh, that would really, really help to, to make it look like the speed. And then with the, had a big, big discussion with friends about, do you put the people in? And my gosh, if you put the people in, how do you put them in? Right. Because they're blurred in the picture. And that blurring with the horse being so crisp gives you that sense of speed. Absolutely. I love that. It's, Just love it. So um, I decided to put them in. And then I had no idea how to get them to be the right size. Because I had sized the whole thing to be about three or four feet. And I knew that the spectators had to be, you know, sized to the horse. Correct. I was going to be using my technique, you know, t a typical uh, fusing technique. And I happened to find in our gallery, sitting on a table, we all exchanged magazines, a quilt life that described how to make your photographs uh, the right size and then print them out. Oh, and wonderful. And it's Excel. And you kind of, you paste the photograph into a cell uh, and then you stretch it right and you can go page by page when a preview to see what you're actually going to print out and that's what i did uh i fused it onto the quilt and then i quilted over it in kind of a randomly a pattern of blurring it right and, and it worked it, it worked well and i did have to unsew it for a day or two where i had made a a rather large mistake, but 
That worked too. Uh, <laughs> to get the sand part of this, I really needed to be able to get different colors because uh, there's a very large area of the quilt that's sand. Right. And right. the key was to get a lot of different colors, a lot of different texture, and then to get the purple or, or violet uh, shadow because the shadow is what sets off the fact that you see this horse all four feet off the ground. Right, you're talking about... One of the uh, things that I did, uh, for, but I used Karen Eckmeyer's technique uh, called Making Waves. She's taught a workshop here, and I absolutely love it when you want to get some free-flowing motion, where in the sky I use paper piecing right. and got it more precise. The sand, I wanted it to be more free and, and, and kind of emit, you know impromptu-looking. Uh, and then when I quilted it, right. I, I quilted it twice. I went through once using a very large quilting uh, design, and then I went back through it with a different color thread for each of the sections. Okay. Very, very small, kind of micro quilting through the larger design. And that gave it this kind of lumpy puffiness that really worked well. Um, I did use a cotton batting in the back and then, a, uh, and then a wool batting on top of the cotton batting. So I have two battings in there, which gives it a nice uh, stiff feel to it and also gives it that nice uh, depth and texture to it. Wow. Brittany's face and the look on her face is what made the whole photograph. And so I understood that if I didn't get that look of exhilaration and mouth open screaming with joy as she's going across the finish line, I was not going to have the quilt that I wanted. And I, uh, Brittany had about four heads uh, <coughs> where I was trying to do this using the techniques of uh, applique. And it just was too small to get that much expression into it. Couldn't and get so a detail. I finally went back to the same thing I did with the folks in the crowd. I, her head is her picture of her face from right. the photograph. Right. And I fitted it onto uh, my uh, fused applique body uh, for Brittany's body and the horse's body is all fused applique. The horse in the photograph probably has about seven to ten different colors on its uh, fur. Part of it is because it's sweating and it's wet. Other parts is because the sun is hitting it. And the other part is that Molly is a roan horse, which is a red horse, and it has lots of different colors on it. The, the legs, the, the sinews on the legs, you could see where the muscle was, where the sinew was, where the bone was, and it was all really stretched out as this horse was running full out. And it, uh, I was cutting the, the tiniest little pieces sometimes, and, you know, and, and then would take my uh, paper off, and it would, I'd have a handful of thread. Right. And I, I could do it again. Oh, <laughs> no. You go, oh, no. So maybe they, and then you would learn to put the fusing on it and then cut it out just, you know, after the paper is off. But wow. it, it worked very well. But there's a lot of purple. Uh, all of the shadow on the horse is purple. Wow. It's uh, different colors of purple, but it's purple rather than black. The mane and the tail are black. Uh, right. On the horse, the quilting is a teardrop design that has kind of swirly marks coming out from it. I did it with a variegated thread that ran red, yellow, orange, etc. Wow. And did it very densely all through the whole horse, even right. across its face. And it worked wonderful. It was amazing. <laughs> nice. And then you left a little bit of areas that weren't as heavily quilted on uh, Brittany the Rider. Right. Because I wanted her to pop out more. And again, with the wool batting, uh, underneath by leaving that open uh, her arms that are extended up have more fullness to them rather than quilting them down right. thanks Rob okay here's a big uh, hug from all of us <laughs> 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 we'll see you back